Hi, and welcome back to the final module for this course, Revit 2024 Level 1, and this is Module 9, Publishing Your Project. So hopefully you've successfully followed the previous modules and completed all of them, and now we are ready to publish our project. So there are several aspects to publishing. The first one we're going to be looking at is publishing sheets to PDF. So we're going to send this out to the PDF printer. And we're going to take all of those sheets that we created in the previous module and publish them to PDF so we can distribute that to our client. And then we're going to look at exporting views to DWG if we, uh, for some reason, needed to do some additional 2D detailing or push those out in an AutoCAD format, we can do that. And we're also going to look at rendering some views and saving those um, in an image format such as PNG. I'm also going to talk a little bit about publishing your models to the cloud. So one option is to publish to BIM 360, which is a separate training course on how to manage and work with BIM 360 as a common data environment. But for now, I just want to show you how to publish that so that you can share your information and encourage a collaborative environment. But I'm also going to show you if you are just interested in publishing your model to the free Autodesk online viewer, similar to BIM 360, and sharing that with your clients, how you can achieve that quite easily. So let's jump straight into that and let's have a look. All right. So in my Revit model that we created in the previous exercise, we've created four sheets, right? You can see here mine says unnamed. So I probably would like to go and complete the information on my title block a little bit. And it's quite easy to do. You'll see when you act access one of the, the sheets that we've created here, it's already got some parameters and I didn't complete all of them. But if I did, if I call this one layout or ground floor layout or whatever, then it's going to start updating my title block. So if I type ground floor layout, then you'll notice that it changes the title here under Sheets, but it also updates the um, sheet that we've got here. And I can go ahead and do that for all the parameters, the project name, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'll just leave that for you to 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 complete. But now you know how to enter that information. It's quite easy. Okay. Um, one more thing that I thought I'd mention is how do we edit these title blocks? So currently, this is the default one that ships with the software. So it's got the Autodesk logo there. Just like everything else in Revit, it's driven by families. So if I select a title block, you'll notice that you can go and ahead and edit that family. And if we click on that, you'll see that here we've got access to the underlying title block elements. And we can adjust things. So you'll see we've got an image here. If I wanted to remove that and replace that with my own images, I can go here to insert and I can import an image and place that in the position where I want that. I'm not going to do it for this exercise, though. Um, that'll be in future um, modules in the level two training. But just to point you in the right direction, that is where you would go and customize title block information and move things around a little bit. OK, now to publish to PDF is quite easy. There's two or three ways of doing this, actually. You can go straight in Revit 2024, which is a new feature, to the PDF button in the Quick Access Toolbar. Now, from here, we can choose that we want to do the current view, or we want to do only the visible portion of the current view, which I wouldn't recommend. Or we can set up a list of selected views and sheets. And if we go and change the properties here, we can go ahead and select those sheets that we want to print. So if I wanted to do views and sheets, I can select all of them. But normally, we would just select the sheets, which already contains the views um, inside of them that we want to publish. So if I select those, and, and you'll notice I can create a preset name for that as well, which I didn't. I just over uh, created an override of the in session um, object. Um, but now that that's set up, we can specify a file name. We can combine the selected views and sheets into a single PDF file. And we can select where we want to place this in our computer when it writes out this file. So if we're happy with the properties that we've set up here, we can go ahead and export that. So when I click on export, it's going to then start and generating that output for me. OK, so we'll just give that a second to finish. We can see here um, in the status bar at the bottom left that it's busy exporting those sheets for us. OK, 
Um, it's just giving me a warning telling me that some of the rasters processing has been done using shadows, point cloud, sketchy lines, depth queuing, blah, 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 blah. But don't worry about that. That's pretty much just standard information. So that's one way of exporting your views. The other one is to press Control and P. And that would be the same as accessing the print button here in the, in the quick access toolbar. And again, you can use your existing printers that may exist on your computer, or you can use the Microsoft Print to PDF, and this will achieve the same output as using the export to PDF button at the top. And again, you'll see we can browse here. We can um, create separate files for all of the PDF, or we can combine a bunch of them into the current one. We can select which sheets we want to be uh, adding to that output, and that'll produce the output for us. The last option or another option is going here to the application menu. If we go to file, you'll see that we can also go to print and we can choose PDF or we can print to PDF. Okay, there's also an export to PDF option here. Right, if we go to export. Right, so that's publishing your drawings. Now, if we want to export some of these views or details to AutoCAD, we can also do that. So if we go to the file menu, we go to export, you'll see there's multiple list of CAD formats. If I select a DWG, for example, I can then go and set up my layer mapping. So of course, when we work with AutoCAD, we work with layers. Um, whereas in Revit, we, we work with object styles um, and different kinds of settings, but we can map them. So we can see all the model categories available in Revit, and we can create a corresponding mapping layer and a color ID for the AutoCAD output. So that applies to layers. We can set up lines, line styles, um, patterns for hatching, text and fonts, colors. If there were 3D objects in the current view, then, and so if it wasn't a sheet, if it was a 3D view, we can specify how we want to export that. And then there's units and coordinates that we use for the exporting exercise to AutoCAD. So that's a, another option. And of course, if we wanted to export the rendered view, so we've got one here, we created this rendered view. And let's say we wanted to export this to a PNG format that we want to include in a presentation or some other external application. All we need to do is activate the view and you'll see if we go to export here and we just hover the cursor on this um, scroll button, it's gonna give us an option to export images and animations. And here is a button for image. You can create walkthroughs, um, which is an animated walkthrough and export that as a video. We're not gonna cover it in this course, however, but um, if you want to export to PNG, again, click on the button, select the location, select the image size and what to export. And that's gonna export that PNG in image for you, that raster image. Okay, now let's say we wanted to publish this to BIM 360 or the Autodesk Viewer. Now, BIM 360 is um, a special service from Autodesk that is geared for, um, multidisciplinary coordination on models. And usually this is used within larger organizations where you have teams of individuals and professionals working on a project. Um, so you would need access to BIM 360, more specifically BIM 360 docs. Um, you can find a bit more information on that online, but the process to do that is either saving your current model to a cloud model. So this will allow you to save to BIM 360 docs. Or if you wanted to use the free viewer, let's say that you just wanted to share your model with a client, then you can also use the online Autodesk viewer to do so. And you can see here, just by the way, when I want to save to BIM 360 docs, it says you need to be invited to an Autodesk docs project. Um, so if you don't have an organization access to BIM 360, it's gonna be a bit tricky to do that. So the alternative is using the free Autodesk viewer. And you can find that at viewer.autodesk.com. So just enter viewer.autodesk.com and it's gonna require you to sign in with your Autodesk ID, the same one that you would have used to access your Revit software um, and activating your trial license. So it's free to use. And then all you need to do is to upload your model to BIM 
to the Autodesk viewer. And once you've done that, your clients would be able to share that you'd be able to share this link with your clients and anybody with the link will be able to view this model and they'd be able to do things like hiding walls, looking inside your model and seeing the design intent. So this is a great way of communicating your design and sharing that information. Look at how amazing that is. And you can do it quite a lot in here. Um, you'll see there's a toolbar, so we can do things like measure distances. We can cut sections in the model. So if we wanted to create a section view, uh, why is mine not working? Oh, I need to set the plane first, of course. So let's set that on the Y plane. You'll see we're cutting a section through here. I can move this back and forth and we can see a live section being cut through the model or we can switch this to the x-plane and cut a section through here or we can do that in the z-plane how nice is that or we can do a box where we can actually set the um the box size so if i select here and i click and drag we can see that there if i select this face i can move it and if we select this face here, I can click and drag that as well. Okay, that's one thing. So the model becomes visible. I'm just going to right click and say show all objects again. This detail here looks terrible. So apologies for my very poor architectural design here, but I'm sure that you'd be able to do a better job <clears throat> now that you understand how to use the tools. All right, now let's say we wanted to access the drawings we can also do that from the autodesk viewer so this is extremely handy right so it gives us access to all of the drawings that we've published um, the 3d model as well so that's all fine and well but you'll notice that when i created this model in the previous module we added additional views we tidied up some geometry and you know we just made it look a bit better and we can't see those changes in this version of the viewer model that I've uploaded. So there's one quick, easy way to fix that. And I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. So I'm going to go back to my Autodesk viewer. We can see that we've got our step five Revit model here. And what I want to do is I want to, oops, I didn't want to open it. I want to update this one. So I'm going to upload a new file. I'm going to choose where that's located but before i do that let me just go ahead and save this version because i didn't save it before and now that it's saved i'm going to select it here and notice how smart it is it's asking me if we have got any linked models in our project and yes we do remember we linked in the structural model so i want to make sure that i also select that linked model and once I've selected all of my linked models, we only have one, I click on upload. And what it's gonna do now is it's going to create a new revision of that view. So we'll give it a, a minute or two to process, and then we'll see what that result looks like.
Okay, so that is completed. And if we now look at our model here, we can see that it's actually brought in all the sheets that we've created, the latest ones, and we can access those again. We can see the latest information is available on these sheets and within this model. And we can share this with anyone that we need to be sharing it with. So if I wanted to share this with my client, I can click here on the share button and you'll see that we've got a link here that we can use. And look, there's even sharing options. Do you wanna see the section enabled, exploded view, model browser, and the measure tools. So that makes it really handy. Um, and I hope you find that extremely useful. So that brings us to the end of the course. I do encourage you to search on YouTube for additional course information and content and how to work on Revit. But I really hope that this has given you a good head start in using Revit 2024. And thank you for attending this course and thank you for your time and have a great day and enjoy your Revit experiences. Okay, cheers for now. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.